today we're going to be coming from the text of Yermi Yahu, the weeping prophet, you know, standing in post Christian times. And, you know, his words still stand true today. We're going to be dealing with chapter 23 of Yermi Yahu and Jeremiah the Bird. Uh, I'm going to first read, read. Yahoo 23, 1 through 6, please. War be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said Yahuwah. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock, flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said Yahweh, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their home, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, said Yahuwah. Behold, the days come, said Yahuwah, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his day, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahuwah, our righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you. As you may have noticed, this is a word of rebuke, a word of admonition, as well as a word of prophecy. It says, woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. This, this, these pastors being spoken of here, you know, relates to the leaders, you know, that destroy and scatter the sheep of, of, of his pastor. But, um, not a good thing, you know, when we really get on the bad side of, of the Most High. You know, so he says in verse 2, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Israel against the pastors that feed, my people, but within it, my and people, you have something that goes untranslated, and it's the Isle of Tav. You know, we, we come to know that that represents the Messiah. So, so here it is, we see that it's speaking of, therefore thus saith Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, against the pastors that feed Yahushua's people, or Yahshua's people. Mm -hmm. Ye have scattered my flock, and driven them away, and have not visited them. And make no mistake about it, even then they were still Yahshua's people. You know, for he was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. In verse 3, he says, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them. Now we know that's that's prophetic. Mm -hmm. You know, that was pro really prophetic back then, you know, and it's, it's still prophetic now today. And to some extent, you know, this this prophecy has, has has come true or is in the midst of coming true. Mm -hmm. You know, we had something that happened that, you know, really, you know, I, I don't think it ever happened before in the history of, of, of humanity, and that is that a nation was dispersed, you know, um, to the four corners of the earth and actually became a people again. You know, and, and this happened in 1948 when Israel... Israel became a state again. When, you know, uh, I don't know if uh, we oftentimes, I don't know if we, we actually think or consider how wondrous and miraculous an event that was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they weren't even in the same land. Right. Wow. They were scattered all over the world. That would be like the equivalent of the Indians, you know, of America. You know, becoming a people again, you know, and 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 having, you know, having dominion over here 
in the, in America somewhere. Can, can you can you see can you see the uh, the parallel? You know, I mean, it would it would even be you know it would be an easier thing for the Indians to do than it was for that to happen with the Yahoo. You know, saying that you know the Indians are still in in the land, so they could gather back again and you know and 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 will you know and, and maybe overcome. Uh, overthrow the government or something to that effect, you know, where, they, where might they receive dominion. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about a people scattered all over the world actually come back together <laughs> and reestablish their, their, um, their dominion in a part of the land. Hmm. That is super duper miraculous. Yeah. That's something only y'all can do. You know, some people try to explain it away. There is no explaining it away. <laughs> right. You know, it hasn't happened before. You know, it's only one way that that can come about, and that's through the power of Yah. Mm -hmm. You know, that that is really awesome. You know, that we have seen that, you know, come to pass, you know, within our lifetime, we, we, we can bear evidence, you know, to this prophecy actually coming to pass. You know, and it's still coming to pass because there's still people that's going over there and joining them and claiming to be uh, the lost tribes of Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I just uh, read maybe about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, of, of one of the tribes that was, um, that uh, uh, I forget which tribe they, they said they were, but they were migrating back over there. A whole, a whole nation of them. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a whole whole bunch of them, you know, and they came for, you know, so, I mean, you know, this, this thing is, you know, is, is yah-sized, it's a yah-sized miracle, I just want, want you to be able to acknowledge that, you know, he says, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase, I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith Yahweh. You know, interestingly enough, this word shepherds and the word pastors up here in verse 1 are the very same word. Hmm. Hmm. They're the very same word. So, um, hmm. you know, why they chose to, maybe they chose to choose shepherds over uh, pastors, because one is shown in the negative and one you know, it's showing in, being shown in the positive, you know. Yeah. But it tells us that they should fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they lack, um, be lacking, say of Yahoo. You know, now, it says, Behold, the days come, say of Yahoo, that I will raise unto Dawu a righteous branch, and a king shall prosper, shall reign and prosper. Ha. Now, we know who that is. You know, we know that's had to be our Messiah, you know, we know he wasn't even um, uh, born during this time, you know, that Yahweh who prophesied this, but we know this had been to come to pass as well, you know, and contrary to popular belief, that righteous branch, that king, he is reigning and prospering even now. He's reigning and prospering in the hearts of men and women all over the globe that submit themselves to him. He's reigning even now. Some people are waiting for him to come and reign. I say he's reigning now because he reigns over me even now. Hmm. Now there's coming a time you know, when he shall come and execute judgment and justice in the earth. Now that is still yet prophetic. Yeah. You know, he's reigning and prospering but he has yet to execute judgment and justice in the earth. You know, and it says, in his days, Yahudah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. You know, I see this as, as happened as well, you know, as a prophecy that have come to pass. You know, Messiah did come. He offered salvation to all of humanity. Yahudah has been saved. The true praisers of Yah, which is what Yahudah means, are, are saved, even now today. Israel, that, those who wrestle with good and evil and prevail by holding on to, to good or to Elohim, they are dwelling safely. Mm -hmm. 
And it says, and this is the name whereby he shall be called, Yahuwah our righteousness. You know, the Messiah is the righteousness of Elohim. Amen? Amen. You know, that is exactly what we call him. Yeah, because that's exactly what he is. Mm -hmm. My next reader, verses 7 through 11, please, of Yahweh who comes to Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that they shall no more say, Yahuwah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahuwah liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their land. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom hath, whom wine hath overcome, because Yahuwah, and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land, more, because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, saith Yahuwah. Thank you. Wow. So we have some pretty heavy stuff here. You know, Yah Yahuwah is saying, Behold, the days come that they shall no more say Yahuwah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Israel. That has happened too. You know, no one's going around, you know, I don't know anyone besides myself that talks talks um, so much about Israel coming out of the uh, coming out of Israel or Egypt. You know, everyone's talking about, you know, how Yahshua, you know, came and saved humanity, right? You know, uh, they're not really concerned with what happened with Israel way back when. You know, and that, that, that has come to pass as well. You know, but verse 8 tells us, but Yahuwah liveth, which brought, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries with, uh, where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. That's what folks are, are to be talking about. You know, and, and that was a, a miraculous event. You know, and even that's done, gotten kind of old to us. Yeah. You know, now, Yami Yahu says heart, though, you know, during this time, his heart it was mm -hmm. broken within him because of the prophets. That all his bones shake. You know, he, he's, he's, he's greatly fearful and, and scared for the, for the prophets. You know, he says the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land worn up in pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their course is evil and their force is not right. You know, the way they're going is evil and they're, they're forcing other people to be evil as well, mm -hmm. to walk in, in their wickedness. It says for, in verse 11, it says, For both prophet and priest are profane, yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith Yahuwah. You know, there's an all, um, I didn't really care for this uh, translation per se. So, you know, I, I took a look and, and I seen that uh, the word both, and, and yea, they're, they're all the same word. They're, they're gam in the Hebrew number 1571, meaning to gather. Hmm. And the three words, have I found, that we that we read in, in conjunction with, have I found their wickedness, is, is one word in the Hebrew, masah, uh, meaning to come forth. Hmm. You know, so I put together an alternate uh, translation of Yahweh 2311. And it says, for both the gathering of the prophet and the priest, are profane, gathering in my house to come forth to their wickedness, saith Yahweh. You know, and this is this is exactly you know what was was happening and what is happening even today. You know, the prophets and the priests they are profane on, on the most part. On the most part, they are profane. They're soiled. They're unclean. Mainly because they've thrown off all the all the laws that are. Uh, a lot that causes them to remain clean. You know, they threw Torah out. Yeah. Torah is, is what teaches us how to be clean and, and, and holy. Well, 
well, if you throw Torah out, Torah out, you know, now you don't know how to remain clean and holy. You know, so you do become soiled. You do become profane. And that, that is what's happened nowadays. Both the prophet and the priest are profane. The gathering of the prophet and the priest, they're profane. The gathering in, in Yah's house mm. come forth in their wickedness. You know, that's exactly what we see. You know, verses 12 through 14 says, Wherefore their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. You don't really want to walk on nothing really slippery in the dark. Really. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that, that's going to Bless you. You know what's going to happen what's going to come out of that. You're going to fall, right? You know, they shall be driven on and fall therein. See, told you. For I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith Yahuwah. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers that none do have run from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. Therefore, Thus saith Yahuwah Zavu'o. Concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness going forth into all the land. You know, so we see here within this prophecy, Yom Yahu said, I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria and they prophesied in Baal cause my people Israel to err. And we still see this happening today. You know, we still see this happening happening now today. You know, so the same thing is kind of going on. You know, there is still folly in the prophets of the watch station. Samaria means watch station. So there's still foolishness in the prophets concerning the watch station, the prophets of the watch station. They still prophesying in Baal. They have altars, you know, um, of wickedness, you know, even even within within their very midst. Says I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem and the horrible thing. They're committing adultery and so they are, you know, they're they're worshiping other Elohim. They're walking in lies. They encourage and strengthen the hands of the evil doers. You know, all this remains true today. You know, so therefore the admonition and the warnings and, and the rebuke is still to those now today. And it is, behold, I will feed them with wormwood mm. and make them drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profane has gone forth into all the land. You know, the place that's supposed to be of peace is, is actually full of wickedness and violence. That's what Jerusalem means, city of peace. Mm -hmm. In Lamentations 3.19, we learn what is meant by wormwood and gall. Mm -hmm. You know, or, uh, and it says in Lamentations 3.19, Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. Mm -hmm. So the wormwood speaks to affliction. And misery speaks to God. Mm. So he said, I will feed them with misery and make them drink. I will feed them with affliction and make them drink misery. Mm. I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of God. Mm. That don't sound good, does it? Mm. <laughs> and lest you think that, you know, that was just for them. Mm. You know, we also see a revelation speaking to the latter, the last days. Revelation 8, 10 and 11, it says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Mm -hmm. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Very same thing that's been 
projected here. Yep. You know, we see that the star, you know, he falls as it were a lamb, a light. Mm -hmm. You know, the Messiah came as a light. Amen. Yep. You know, and it says his name is Wormwood. You know, Wormwood is something that Yah says he will feed the people, the uh, feed the prophets and the priest will. Mm -hmm. You know, which will bring about their affliction. And their misery. Mm. And here it is, it's saying that this lamp, you know, something that they're gonna they're they're gonna um listen to, they're gonna recognize as a light. But it's really gonna be wormwood. Mm. It's really gonna be the cause of their affliction and their misery. And we see it says, and the third part of the waters became wor wormwood. You know, the waters and and um can speak to counsel. You know, where it even said a third part, of, um, it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. The fountains of the waters speaks to righteous counsel. Because that's the type of water that Yah, only Yah made. That's, that's his natural fountain. Versus a well, something that man made, that man dug out. You know, so we see the symbolism here actually speaking to this prophecy in Yahoo 23, 15. Where Yahuwah says concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with the wormwood and make them drink the water of God. Truly, he's going to feed them with affliction and make them drink the water of misery. Mm -hmm. Madam, next read to read verses 16 through 18, please. Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that, pro that prophecy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of Yahuwah. They say still, they say still unto them that despises, that despise me, Yahuwah, Yahuwah hath said, ye shall have peace, and they shall, and they say unto every one, that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For, for who hath stood in the council of you and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Hallelujah. You know, so here it is. Yah is not only sending his admonishment out to the priest and the prophets. He's also sending it unto the people. He says, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. He's telling them, you know, hey, don't listen to these prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of Yahuwah. They're not speaking Yah's words. They're speaking vanity. They make you vain. They say still unto them that despise me, Yahuwah have said, ye, have, uh, ye shall have peace. You know, Yah is not going to give peace to those that despise him. But that's what they say. They say still unto them that despise me, Yahuwah have said, ye shall have peace. Really? And they say unto everyone that walk up after the imagination of their own heart, no evil shall come upon you. That is exactly what they're saying today. That's exactly what they're teaching today. They're saying, you know, you can say these few words, you know, and believe in your heart and presto change, oh, you're saved forever. That's exactly what they're saying. And they're saying, you're, you're going to be at peace. You're going to be prosperous and and, and his shalom is going to cover you. They're telling those who walk up after the imagination of their, of their own heart that's doing any and everything that comes to their mind that no evil shall come upon them. Even to the priests and the prophets and the pastors that's, 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 in, that's in the leadership positions in front of the, of the flock doing the imaginations of their own heart. I mean, it's preposterous. You see priests messing with little boys, and yet they still remain priests. 
How do you, how do you, how do you justify that? You see, pastors, you know, committing adultery with people of, of, of right within their own midst and still remain pastor. You see, prophets who undoubtedly misprophesied, or prophesied, rather, <laughs> and yet still are considered prophets. I had someone tell me just the other day, you know, um, concerning some prophets that, yeah, you know, well, you know, they, you know, um, they messed up um, a few times. <laughs> what? The prophets of Elohim don't mess up. Right. They speak for Yah. Because he puts their, his words in their mouth. He tells them what to say. So the words can't fall to the ground. They only fall to the ground when they speak in their own words. This very same thing is happening. You got to see this. Because if you can't see it, then you're not going to you're going to be blinded to to the rebuke that comes down the line. You know, hence we read in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, that's the teachings and instructions, the commandments of, of Yahshua, and do of them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. See, this is the way we want to be. This is the house that we want to live in, one that's founded upon a rock. The rock, the rock of Elohim, even our Messiah, Yahushua. Verse 26, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. Spiritually speaking, the rain speaks to the teachings and instructions, the floods. Speaks to the enemies that come along, and the winds speak to the doctrines. When they come your way, will your house stand? When the rain descend, will your house stand? When these false teachings and instructions, when they descend upon you, will your house stand? Is it founded on the rock? When the enemy rise up against you, will your house stand? Is it founded upon the rock, Yahshua? Will you be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine? Or will your house stand because it's founded upon the rock? The teachings and instructions, the commandments, the sayings of our Messiah, Yahushua. Yahweh 19 through 24, behold, a whirlwind of Yahuwah is going forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. This is what's going to happen. So we, we need to acknowledge this admonishment. Because it says in verse 20, the anger of Yahuwah shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, he shall consider it perfectly. Well, I think we are in the latter days. We're in the most latter days of anyone that's mentioned in this word. In the scripture of anyone in this world you know we're in the latter days for sure so we need to understand this and consider it perfectly or wholly completely we need to understand this what do we need to understand what well, tells us in verse 21, I have not sent these prophets. That's what we need to understand. That Yah have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, even though I didn't send them, if they had stood in my counsel, even though they ran and I hadn't spoke to them, if they had stood in my counsel, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way. 
and from the evil of their doings. He wouldn't have had a problem with them. Even though he didn't send them, even though he didn't tell them, had they caused them to hear his words, then he wouldn't have had a problem. By the way, where it says, and had caused, hmm. those three words actually aren't in the text. Hmm. They actually translated the al tav as and, and had caused. Hmm. You know, so it's really speaking, saying, you know, if they had stood in the council of Yahshua, you know, and if they had stood in, in, in the council of Yahshua, his people, to hear his words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. He goes on in verse 23 and said, I, a Elohim at hand, saith Yahuwah, and not an Elohim of our own. <laughs> you know, that am right there in the King James was added to. You know, I don't think we need it. Because he is an Elohim at hand. He's not an Elohim afar off. He said, I, an Elohim at hand, say of Yahuwah, and not an Elohim afar off. I'm right here. He says, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? There's no place you can hide. He said, if Yahuwah, do not I feel the heaven and the earth? Say, if Yahuwah, where are you going to hide? How are you going to hide from somebody who feels the heavens and the earth? <laughs> There's no hiding places. He can see you wherever you are. He can see you whatever you're doing. You know, that's why I, I coined this phrase that, that someone told me a long time ago. And it was, you know, before you leave out the house, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what is y'all going to catch me doing today? <laughs> because if you do something wrong, he going to see you. <laughs> you're not going to hide it from him. It's not going to be a secret just with, you know, just with you, yourself, and, and, and you. Okay. <laughs> Let me have my next reader read verses 25 through 31, please. I have, heard, I have heard that the prophet said that prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath the dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my words, let him speak my words faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, says Yahuwah? Is not my word like as a fire, says Yahuwah, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, says Yahuwah, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, says Yahuwah, that use their tongues and say, he said. <laughs> Thank you. You know, so the Messiah is letting us know he's heard the prophets. He heard those prophets that prophesied lies in his name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. He, he, he's heard, he heard lies, he heard the prophets that, you know, saying that they're speaking for him. He says, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesied lies? They are prophets of deceit of their own heart. Which think to cause my people to forget. These two words to cause, guess what? They're not really there. You know, that's actually the out top that's, that they're translating on it from. You know, so speaking of those which think Yahshua's um, people or her making Yahshua's people forget Yah's name by their prophecy of lies, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. They don't even have the name of Yah right no more. 
calling them things that's associated with bail. People can't see it. You know, where is that? Uh, which thing right here? The beginning of um, the beginning of verse 27. These two words, which think, is taken from the Hebrew word kasha, number 2803, meaning to play or braid, to interpenetrate, to weave. You know, so here it is. We have a picture that's being presented here of one braiding into Yahshua's people. You know, weaving into them something that's causing them to forget his name. You know, it's that mixture, you know, of the truth with the falsehood. You know, just like we seen with, with Aaron, you know, while Moshe was uh, going up receiving the, the, the commandments of Elohim, you know, he said, hey, tomorrow feast unto Yahuwah, you know, but then he make a, a, a pagan idol. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it's that weaving, that intermixing. Not good. Also in, in verse 28, you know, it speaks of the prophet that have a dream. Let him tell a dream, and he that have a word, let him speak my word faithfully. Well, this prophet here, as he's speaking of, it says uh, it's, there's actually an altav in there. Hmm. So it's speaking of Yahshua's prophet hmm. that have a dream. Let him tell a dream. And that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat? Nothing. <laughs> Almost the complete opposite. Say of Yahweh. Now here's 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 something that you can put in your arsenal. Hmm. You know, for all the for the all the warriors out there. You know, this is something you can put in your arsenal. He said, It's not my word as a fire. Hmm. You know, it, it's 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 good to throw a fireball at your enemy. You know, fireballs are pretty effective against the enemy. You know, so, you know, if you're going through some spiritual warfare, put the word on it. It'll be like a fire, say of Yahuwah. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. You know, when you're coming up against, you know, uh, unclean spirits, demons, you know, um, what have you. One that's claiming to be a rock. But they not the rock. Use the hammer. His word is also like a hammer. That's pretty good. Fiery hammer. That can break rocks in, in, in pieces and consume stuff. You know, that's what is the shaft to the wheat, you know. That's what you do with shaft. You burn it up. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, said Yahuwah, that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. You see a lot of that going on today, too. You know, I was even watching, um, as crazy as it may sound, you know, someone uh, sent me this uh, documentary, and it was showing about this uh, modern-day prophet, so-called, and he was prophesying, and then they showed this uh, notable witch in, in, in the occult, you know, that they, that they know of. You know, uh, I guess she's kind of, you know, a big wig in, in that, you know, circles. And the prophet had took, taken his prophecy right from her mm. was saying almost verbatim in many cases it was verbatim exactly what she had prophesied like 20 years prior mm. Mm. yeah mm. you know so if they steal each other's words you know they're still y'all's words he says you know he's against the prophets that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, said Yahuwah, that use their tongues and say he said. You know, because they take his words and then they mix them with their own words and they pollute them. 
Not cool. Verses 33 through 36, it says, And when his people, or the prophet, or a priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of Yahuwah? Thou shalt say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith Yahuwah. This word, them there, uh, as in, what then say unto them, is actually an out of time. That's, you know, what shall then say to Yahshua, uh, what burden? I will even forsake you, saith Yahuwah. Verse 34, and ask for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say the burden of Yahuwah, I will even punish that man in his house. Thus shall ye say, everyone to his neighbor and everyone to his brother, what have Yahuwah answered? And he, what have Yahuwah spoken? And the burden of Yahuwah shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living Elohim, of Yahuwah Zavoho, our Elohim. And there's an out of in there. That duh isn't really there. You have perverted Yahshua's words mm. of the living Elohim. And so they have been perverted. So much so that the very thing that he came in, it says that he came in 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 the um, in the words of the of the book. He actually lived the book, lived it out. And they say that's done away with. The very scriptures that, that he that he lived and showing us the way. They perverted his words. They say, oh no, nah, you don't you don't gotta do none of that. <laughs> no, nah, you do whatever you want. All you gotta do is believe. <laughs> All you gotta do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, and you good. <laughs> That's it. No, nah, you don't no, nah, no, nah, you don't gotta stop lying. No. Nah. Mm. Like, well, you shouldn't steal, but, you know, if you do it, ain't no big thing. You still say. How ridiculous is that? You know, transgression of Torah is the very definition of sin. They're teaching people that sin is okay. That's ridiculous. Every man's word shall be his burden, and so it is. You know, so much so that, you know, even even in this wicked country we live in, you know, they, they hold you to your word. Your word is your burden. You know, that's what the courts are there for. A lot of people think the courts are there to actually enforce the laws, you know. But really, they're, they're there to enforce contracts. You know, if, if you contracted with me to, to fix my car, and I paid you and you don't fix my car, then my remedy or recourse is to take you to court and sue you. You know, the judge is there to see, first of all, if we had a contract, and if we did have a contract, to force you to keep your end of it. That's pretty much it. Same thing, you know, when, when you break a law and, and you, you go before the judge for a crime. You know, because you signed up, you know, to be a citizen of, of, of this country, you agree to walk in the, um, in the laws thereof. And as a result, if you break one of the laws, you know, we're going to bring you before the judge. We're going to take a look, see if there's actually a contract. Once we uh, see that there's a contract, we're going to hold you accountable. Sometimes that accountability comes in the form of a fine. Sometimes it comes in the form of jail time. Sometimes it comes in the form of both. Oh, and don't forget community service. Sometimes it comes in the form of that too. Or all three. Verses 37 to 38. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What have Yahuwah answered thee? And what have Yahuwah spoken? But since ye say the burden of Yahuwah, therefore thus say of Yahuwah, because ye say this word, because ye say, and there's an out of there too, because ye say Yahshua's word, the burden of Yahuwah. Yahshua's word is not the burden of Yahuwah. 
And I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of Yahuwah. Therefore, behold, I even I will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city that I gave you and your fathers, and, and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame. We shall not be forgotten. Yahshua's word is not the burden of Yahuwah. In fact, Matthew 11, 28 and 30 tells us, Come unto me, the Messiah says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So don't be saying the burden of Yahuwah. This was a term that was referred to by the prophets. The prophets considered it, it was, you know, that was the, the same, you know, for having the word of Elohim. That was their burden. Hmm. And they used to call it the burden of Yahuwah, you know, which uh, spoke to the prophecy that they, that they gave, hmm. that Yah had, had given them, supposedly. And, and as we learn here that, you know, many of them, Yah hadn't even given them no prophecy. You know, that was their own burden. But the Messiah says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And Yah, he got a little perturbed. He don't like that saying, you know, the burden of Yahuwah. Because his ways are not burdensome. You know, that's lies of the false prophets that don't that they don't put out there and made people think that you can't walk in the way of Elohim. Like, it's, it's impossible. You can't keep Torah. That's, you know, that's impossible. That's a bunch of malarkey. You can. It's much easier than keeping the laws of man. You know, man has so many laws, you can't even read them all in a lifetime. Over six million laws on a book, and, and on the books. You know, you can't even read six million um, laws in a lifetime. Yahs is all contained within the scripture. Very easily done for anyone who has a heart to do them. They're not a burden. Truly, Yahs yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's all I have for you today. Pray it was a blessing.